Today we're going to talk about the importance of timely weed management in row rise. When we take a look at row rice, a lot of the weeds that we typically have in the crop are somewhat similar to what we would see in uh, soybean production and maybe even cotton production. While we typically do not think of Palmer amaranth as being a major weed of flooded rice, it would be one of the most important weeds that we, we would see in a row rice situation similar to what we have uh, here today. I'm standing in front of a plot that we've uh, made every effort possible to try to keep this free of Palmer amaranth and what we're looking at in the field here today is the effect of different emergence times or even removal times of Palmer amaranth from rice and how that ultimately influences the quality of the crop as well as the yield potential of our rice crop. Come and let's take a look at some of the plots. What we see here is we've had students that actually came through and hand removed uh, some of the Palmer amaranth to establish our various removal timings. We're looking at removal one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks and beyond after the planting or even the emergence of the rice. What we see in the field here today is this is actually full page of 7521 rice. Uh, it was planted on May the 29th, so we're approximately almost four weeks after planting. And really a key takeaway here is the inability to control Palmer amaranth early on in the growing season can give us some major issues here uh, within this crop. Uh, we see a high population of Palmer amaranth behind us. This Palmer amaranth here now is quickly approaching 24, uh, maybe even 30 inches in height. And with that, I am confident we're going to have early season yield loss associated with this and really the research that I'm showing you today is to quantify how much yield loss we have as a function of the, uh, the period that this crop was competing with the Palmer amaranth or the Palmer was competing with the crop. We're now taking a look at sickle pod in row rice. The point here to make is that this is not a weed that we would see in a flooded system under normal situations, but again in row rice the weeds that we have is uh, are generally more complex, they're more diverse uh, than what we would have in a conventional flooded culture. We also notice that we have Palmer amaranth in this field, there's going to be some Johnson grass uh, in this field, as well as our typical row rice weeds uh, or, or rice weeds. Things like barnyard grass, broadleaf signal grass are going to be other weeds that we're going to have uh, in this field and have to manage. The uh, lack of a flood in this system is going to result in us having to have at least three herbicide applications on a field like this uh, because the rice here is probably another two to three weeks from canopy. If this was a uh, flooded culture, uh, we would have gone to flood by now and we would not have further weed emergence. But because of the absence of the flood, weeds are going to continue to emerge in this field. Uh, weeds like Palmer amaranth are going to have to be controlled as they continue to emerge throughout the growing season until we get a canopy formation. And with that, it's not uncommon the, for us to make four herbicide applications in a row rice system if we're going to maintain season-long control. We're standing in a field of, or a plot of row rice at this point that looks relatively uh, clean. We had some weeds in here, but we have taken care of them with timely applications. I want to talk about putting together a program for row, row rice. The plot that we're looking at here has Obey, which is a combination of quinclorac and clomazone at the time of planting. In addition to that, we generally are going to need a material uh, such as Sharpen, which is in this plot, to provide us some residual control of weeds like Palmer amaranth in row rice. In addition with that, we came back in this area here and we applied rice bow uh, early post, about 14 days after uh, emergence. Uh, followed that again 14 days later with just a recent application of new path in this field here. So with that, we have three applications and we're going to have to wait and see as to whether we'll need a fourth application because looking at this rice, we have a high level of control at this point, but we're probably upwards of three weeks before we get a dense 
this canopy and with that we may have some potential emergence. Uh, currently we have a loyant application scheduled on this rice at eight ounces if we have pigweed that comes up uh, beyond the um, th this time here up until canopy formation. So that's basically how we put together programs. You're generally talking about a four pass uh, system that really starts with things like clomazone pre for the grass control as well as a good broadleaf product like Sharpen to provide control of weeds like pigweed or palmer amaranth. This past year, we've seen a lot of injury from clomazone, and I've had a lot of folks mention just again the fear of using a full rate of, of clomazone. And I understand a full rate is going to differ by uh, soil texture, but under wet conditions, it's not atypical to see a lot of symptomology with clomazone on rice. And here we're three weeks after, I'm sorry, four weeks after planting, and we still have some symptomology here. Uh, we watered this row rice yesterday, and with with that uh, we typically will see an influx of some of the bleaching on this under these wet environments. I like to see a little bleaching in rice. It's indicative of the fact that the herbicide is really working and when we look at this, this rice, uh, while there is barnyard grass, probably signal grass, crabgrass and other weeds in this field, uh, we see little uh, to no grass weeds in this uh, basically because of the high activity that we're getting out of the clomazone with the at planting application uh, again which is indicative of the bleaching we see in the crop.